Welcome to Manny Manhattan News. I'm Manny Manhattan and I occupy Wall Street. Tonight is another episode on why we occupy. I'd like to introduce my friend Scott. Scott, tell me something. Are you a, not, are you a US citizen? Yes. Uh, what, how much education do you have, sir? I have a master's degree. Where do you live? I currently live in a homeless shelter. This man, a U.S. national, with very well educated, is now in a homeless shelter. Let's find out how this happens. Uh, let's talk about your, your graduation. What happened to you once you had graduated? Well, basically once, basically once I graduated, um, the faculty at the college where I went to uh, said to go to the Career Center for help because they're, they're the ones that can help you, we can't. And I also ended up in a situation where um, I, was, I went to the emergency room because my back went out and so I ended up going on welfare for a while. Mm -hmm. So between that and between the fact that I wasn't finding any decent kind of work uh, prior to graduate school, most of the work I did was temporary office work because that was all that I could find. And that pretty much dried up around 2001. I went on unemployment for quite a while. Uh, then I found another position, then I went on unemployment for quite a while. And then in, in 2003, which was the year I started graduate school, I got to make one video for a PBS station. And beyond that, I was doing some temporary uh, scoring for ETS, Educational Testing Service, and that, again, that was temporary work, very low pay. It was actually work from home, and at the, that was the point where I got accepted to graduate school. Mm hmm So, um, uh, your degree is in what? Uh, my bachelor's is in English and Communication, and my master's is in Cinema and Media. Uh-huh. So, uh, did you try looking for work in, let's say, the television networks? Yes, I tried all of them when I was in Indianapolis. I tried them all again when I got to New York, uh, both during and after graduate school. Hmm. Well, hmm. So, where you, when was the point where you lost your home, and how, what are the circumstances which you lost your home? Well, I, I lost my home. Uh, in in 2000, say I lost it in 2012. In 2011, I was going through an eviction. Uh, the only work I could find was tutoring, which was the only work that the career center on campus could recommend to me. I couldn't get enough hours to do that, so I was working for $15 an hour. The maximum hours a week I ever got was 12, and there usually were a lot of cancellations, so I often got less than 12 hours a week. And so I went through an eviction. Uh, a friend hired me to do some work. Uh, they got me a one-shot deal, but I had already lost the job by the time the one-shot deal went through. Then, at, as soon as that job was over, one of my graduate school colleagues offered me work in Jacksonville, Florida. So I put all my stuff in storage, went down there. He said there'd be a three-month probationary period. He no-showed all but one of our meetings and blame me that the work I gave him wasn't what he wanted and he fired me after three months. Well, oh, that's terrible. And I got on a bus, came back, and I've been in a shelter ever since because the, the, the probationary salary was 18000 a year and that's left me with as little, as, it's fluctuated a bit, but it, at the low point I was getting $112 a week in unemployment and the high has been about a little over $140. Uh, you can't even rent a room on that. Hmm. I mean, you can rent a room on that, but you'd have nothing for anything else. Mm. You mean like for silly things like food and heat? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Has the crisis that came in 2008, do you think that has a bearing on your lack of work? Absolutely. I, I think that the, the job market, well, first of all, the year I graduated with my bachelor's was 1999. and. I've read a number of articles that said there have been, there's been zero net job growth since 1999. And then with the crisis in 2008, it really got to the point that nobody was hiring because, I mean, I could fill out an application for Target and I, I'd get a notice that they weren't interested in hiring me. Mm -hmm. And if you look, right now I'm getting my computer access from Brooklyn College and if you look at the Target near Brooklyn College, 
there's usually about a third of the cashiers that there really need to be at any given time, so it's clear that they're not hiring anyway, um, could, because they're, they're co consistently understaffed, and I don't believe it's because people aren't applying, because I see people sitting down at those kiosks who apply all the time. And even though I have applied to work there, given that I, ha I have this medical challenge, I'm, I'm really limited to a desk job, and the fact that I was even willing to apply to a couple of retail jobs and get told you don't have enough retail experience. Uh, the, just There's so many people unemployed right now that employers can use anything to get whatever they want and if they don't see what they want they just won't pay anybody to do anything. Hmm. Do you have the fear that there, anybody who hires you will uh, give you like 29 hours or less a week so they won't have to pay you any benefits? I definitely fear that because that has happened on a, new, on a number of occasions. I mean, even the friend who hired me as a freelancer, uh, even though she put me on the payroll, uh, she did keep me un under the full-time hours. So mm. she kept me as a part-timer, and then she basically said I could work freelance. Uh, it was very difficult for me to do that from home because of the limitations of my computer. And now I can't do that from home because my computer's in a storage unit. Huh. So if you it's, were, not, it's, not, it's not a laptop. <laughs> it's not a laptop. Oh, jeez. And so obviously, you can't bring it to the homeless shelter, or the day you leave, it'll probably get stolen, eh? Yeah. I mean, there are people at the shelter who have laptops, believe it or not, but I mean, but they, are, they already had them. I don't already have one. I have a desktop, and there's nowhere for me to set up, because they, they wouldn't even let you plug in your cell phone. If they catch really? you, if they catch you plugging in your cell phone, they'll make you they'll, they'll they'll make you take it out, and technically they're supposed to confiscate it. Some oh. they they usually only do that if you do, if you're a repeat offender, though. Oh my goodness! It's a hmm. so I mean so that that's basically the the only way I could have an alarm clock, but I have to keep it in the locker. So I actually I've actually tried that, and all it does it it runs down the battery, and I can't hear it because it's in the locker. And if I don't put it in the locker, somebody's gonna steal it. <laughs> Boy, that's a sure catch twenty two. Um, so tell us about your affliction. How did you get, uh, how did you throw out your back? Well, the doctors basically say that it's cumulative. Um, they, been, it, it's possible that I did, I did have a shower mat that went out from under me in the shower a couple times and I fell uh, out. That may have contributed to that, although it, that's, not, it, that's not at the moment I went to see the emergency room with it. That was quite a bit before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had problems with my feet since, uh, Pretty much I was, since I was about 18, uh, I, w I was always like in a lot of pain because I actually started out doing some retail work and I was, and I, I, at first I thought, well, I'm on my feet all the time, of course they're gonna hurt, and I found out it was really abnormal. Mm. I was eventually diagnosed with plantar fasciitis in 2011. Okay, I don't know, I don't uh, know what that means. It, it's, it's a problem with, with a nerve on the bottom of the foot. Ah, oh, I see. And in addition to that, I have scoliosis that was never diagnosed until I was 29. I have multiple herniated discs, and I, I have sciatica, and I have issues with muscular issues like the ischial band and so forth that they give me serious problems. Uh, if I were to work in a fast food environment, I might end up dead because I spa because I spasm uncontrollably when I'm on my feet for a long period of time, and uh -huh. and I have to catch furniture, so I'd be a danger to myself or other people if I were to work in a fast food, in addition to the fact that I wouldn't pay the rent. Right, because you can't survive on 725. Yeah. Um, so so you, you have to have a desk job, and you can sit still for eight hours? Pretty much. I, I, I actually have lost jobs because I have an overactive bladder, which I think is also goes with a back problem. Mm. And I actually did lose a, ten, a job with Kelly Services because I was getting up to go to the bathroom too much. Mm. And, and because it, I got fired over the phone, is, which seems to be the way I typically get fired. Uh, I can't prove it, and so the fact that that's legal to fire someone for that, um, just, there's, there's no evidence for it. I mean, I talked to an attorney about when I, I was let go from the job in Jacksonville, and he, he basically said, if I could document this with evidence, I'd have a very strong case against my employer. Uh, but because, I mean, there are emails and back and forth between us, but there's, I don't think there's strong enough evidence that for an attorney to take the case, and I wouldn't want to take it on my own. Mm, I see. Well, tell us about the conditions at your homeless shelter. Uh, the conditions are atrocious. Um, I've been going to soup kitchens on a regular basis because I got food poisoning eight times in the first month I was at the current shelter. Um, 
At my previous shelter, we had rooms. It was basically two men to a room, but there was no door. And then there'd be security cameras in the hallway. I actually got attacked by my roommate at one point, but he had this—he had the foolishness to—to to, he 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 put it, he put his arm around me from behind, and he was smaller than me, but he but he he could fl he flung me out in the hallway and actually had my lock in my hand, so I actually fell down and it went right on the slip disc, so uh. I couldn't do much of anything while he was there punching my face, and I didn't want to fight back because it was on the security camera, and I didn't want to look like I had any I had any fault in it. Um, but the, the shelter I'm in now, I understand, is the earliest shelter in New York City. It was built in 1872, I believe. Um, and you, we don't even have rooms. It's a big dorm, 55 guys on each floor. And it's, it's dirty. Um, like I said, I got f sick from the food. I got impetigo the first week after I was transferred. I, had, I still have a few scars on my neck that are probably way too faint to see on the camera. But my doctor said they came from the pillow because um, mm -hmm. I, I, it was all like scabs bursting all here. At first I thought it might have been acne until I saw my doctor. Uh, it, it was really rough and basically we, ha we have a cot that's really too short for me because I, I mean I sleep in an extra long bed and we have a locker and that, that's all we get. Uh, at least we have private shower stalls, uh, at least we just draw the curtains like a, because I'd, I'd have been out of there if, if they, I'd, I'd probably be sleeping on the street if they, I mean, if they, if they made a shower in front of everybody. Uh, so that, that's one mildly, but it's really dirty and people leave their syringes everywhere. They, they transferred me. The first shelter I was in was a general population shelter and they ended up tra transferring me to substance abuse shelter after putting in the name of the shelter uh, on Google would, would show the blog where I was talking about my experiences in the shelter and they found it, it made them look bad. They threatened me for a couple days and then I arrived back for dinner and I was given an administrative transfer to this other shelter, which is a substance abuse shelter. Mm -hmm. And so the, the clientele at this shelter is not quite as nice as the clientele at the other shelter. Wow, and yeah. you got attacked at this shelter? I got attacked, at, I got attacked at the preceding shelter. Uh, my roommate was mad at me because I wanted the lights on long enough to, to take out my contact lenses and it was before 11 o'clock at night when the lights are supposed to go out. Uh, so as like I need the lights on to take out my content, I put it on and he grabbed me from behind, flung me in the hallway. I'd known the guy five days, I reported him to the police, the police refused to do anything because I didn't know his date of birth even though I'd known the guy five days. <laughs> and the only reason I'd known him that much is because this was during Hurricane Sandy and we were all staying in the shelter and not going out the way we normally would. Mm. So has Hurricane Sandy affected your lifestyle in any way? Oh, uh, well, we weren't really impacted by Sandy because I was in Bushwick at the time, so basically we just stayed in during the storm and there, and there was no way to, to get anywhere because I, I actually, that was the moment I had, that was actually at the time I had freelance work. I lost my freelance ah. work um, a couple days after Sandy and I was actually, as soon as soon as they started the buses back up, I tried to get to work, but I was I was trying to get from Bushwick to Riverdale, basically. Riverdale, wow. Because that's, that's where the yeah the job was in Riverdale, and I I, I was working at someone's in home business doing video editing. Ah. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a nice part time freelance gig, seventeen fifty an hour. Um, nice. But, um, the the boss said she'd love to have me there again, but uh, the issue was budget cuts. Hmm. And, and her client, her client cut the budget. Then what we were making were promotional videos, and so promotional videos, there's not immediate profit from that. So it's like this is the easiest thing to cut. I was doing video editing, and so I lost my job. I was not even shooting the videos, so like I, I wasn't the only one who lost my job. It was a very small business, but clearly it had nothing to do with me. It was just I, I, I was the guy who basically finished up these videos by editing them. Hmm. Um, you said you know how to edit. What are other skills that you have? Um, I am a very experienced writer. I've been published. Uh, I worked for a company in 2007. I, I did some articles for their magazine. I actually got fired because of that because of I prioritized the way any normal person would and my boss was crazy and my coworkers uh, were like, I did, I did what any rational human being would have done, but unfortunately the president of the company wasn't rational and he thought I should have prioritized my dictation over taking the phone call with the person I was assigned to interview three days earlier. 
<laughs> because we kept playing phone tag. Uh -huh. And so basically I lost my job because I thought the phone call would be priority o over this dictation that's routine. I see. Even though that's that's basically how my boss conducted business, and and he he called he called in the middle of the night because he because he was in India at the time for a wedding. Oh. Yeah. And, and so it's like, is my dictation done? I was like, uh, it probably will be in about half an hour because I t spent ten minutes on this call. I put I put all my notes from the call aside and went back to your dictation, but. He said, the next thing you do, I'm going to lose your job. I actually managed to stay there another two months. Oh, well. That's, he, that's said, he said, the next thing that happens is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. He told me, come in early to work on a project, and 10 minutes early wasn't early enough. Oh. And this was rough because I was coming from Staten Island at the time. And he didn't say, he just said, come in early. Yeah, he, he didn't. He did not specify. He didn't specify at all. And I had a tendency to come in like five minutes late anyway, so. Oh, well, that's very bad. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, video editing, writing, journalism. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, uh, skills you have? I, I've, I've done some camera work. I can't do a whole lot of that because of my back problem. Mm -hmm. But, that, but that, that's basically been the, the core. I would, like I said, it was a double major in communication and English. So the, those are the sorts of things that I, that I do. And then, and then the master's was in cinema and media. Uh huh. Have you tried? Uh, huh. Although it's a, a dead way, a dead media. Have you tried like publications like the New York Times? And, Absolutely. Oh, so you were right there. At, yeah, that was top of the list. Okay. Yeah. Um, very few, even interviews. I mean, I I've been a, I've been averaging about one interview for every hundred applications I put out, mm -hmm. and I, I've I've been keeping track uh, of how many. Uh, applications I do since April, the month I pre was pretty sure the job in Jackson was on the line. Uh, at the last time I worked on the spreadsheet, I was at 1,892 jobs, and I did quite a few on Friday that I haven't added to that spreadsheet yet. I see. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Well, it's good that you're sleeping in a shelter as opposed to the subway. Yeah, I actually did that for a couple of days when I got back because I was afraid of going into the shelter system. Wow, the shelter system is so scare scary. You'd yeah, because I, 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 I actually did visit Bellevue at first, and I didn't want to go in there. And then I stayed with I stayed with some friends who didn't really have room for me to stay there, and and, and one of them was like. I, I, I have to, I'm, I, you, I'm going to take you to the shelter. I, I'm, I'm going to hope you promise you'll stay there because he had me at his house in Connecticut, and it, and it wasn't his house; it was his family's house, and his and his family was coming for Memorial Day. So it's like I can't have you here because uh, I mean it's not even my house. Well, so, he has a good point. Yeah. So 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 he he took me to Bellevue. And I checked in, and Bellevue actually turned out. Bellevue is the only one that's run by the Department of Homeless Services. And aside from the meal ticket issue and the fact that they they kick you out at three in the morning, uh, they actually transferred me from uh, from the, the intake shelter to the shelter in Bushwick at three in the morning. Huh. Uh, and it was basically because uh, I was brushing my teeth when they did the bed count. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they'll punish you for anything at this place. And I, I, right now, I, I'm under threat of being transferred to a shelter with an 8 p.m. curfew because of not holding to the savings plan. And the reason I've been having trouble holding to the savings plan is because uh, HRA was paying for my storage unit and I now have to pay for that out of my unemployment because my unemployment actually disqualifies me from any sort of cash assistance from HRA. What, what, what is this savings plan? Uh, the, um, other than expenses that, 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 that they agree that I can take out, I have to save 60% of my income and I have, I have to show them the receipts from, the, from my savings account at the bank. And I do have one other option, that's to give them money orders, and I'm not willing to do that because I've heard too many horror stories about people having their money orders stolen by staff members. I see. So, so let me understand this. You're getting an unemployment check yes. for X. You have to take 60% of X and put it in a bank account? Yes. And the purpose of the bank account is to, well, give you enough money to finally move out? Pretty much. Uh, and at one point I was actually... The, the, the Bushwick shelter actually took me to a place on 145th Street and tried to make me rent a room even though I had this unemployment and it was not enough to actually, actually even cover the room and, they, and, it, and it was such a shady one that they wanted me to pay them $200 up front before they even showed me anything and I was like, I'm not doing that and, and, they, were, and they were pissed. Hmm. Uh, I was like, you did not tell me in advance that I was going to have to pay you 
that I was gonna have to pay these people two hundred dollars before I even saw a room. I was like, we told you there was a two hundred dollar brokerage fee. You did not say that it was in, in advance before I saw a room. Mm -hmm. And it's like I am not doing that under any circumstances. And that that put me in hot water with them and probably contributed to the transfer. But it's also kept you got to keep your two hundred dollars. Yeah, I got to keep my two hundred dollars as opposed to it being. Somehow lost yeah. under the under a file. If you yeah, if so you so, ba what I'm so basically, at this moment, because because I can show the receipt for the storage and receipt for a monthly Metro card, they're basically saying you have to save twenty dollars a week. And but actually, even that's a struggle because because I'm not eating at the shelter because the because the food is toxic, and so I'm trying. Mm -hmm. And I every month I'm having to draw off my savings to pay for the storage because because I'm spending too much on food. Wow. Uh, do you ever eat at the Catholic Worker or any places like that? Um, I haven't eaten at that one in particular. Actually, I just had a friend tell me about that place the other day. Oh. I haven't been there yet, but I, I've been to a lot of places, St. Francis Xavier, Holy Apostles, uh, Masby of Flatbush is near Brooklyn College where I get my computer access, but they've been closed a lot for the Jewish holidays. The Catholic place was closed for the Jewish holidays. No, okay. <laughs> Nazareth Na Flatbush is a Jewish place. Oh, closed. now it makes sense. Yeah, there, there's, this, there's, this, there's, a, there's several soup kitchens run by a Jewish outfit called Masbia, and they're, and they're out in Brooklyn. And, and there's one that, that's a very short bus drive from Brooklyn College, so I've been going there quite a bit lately. But of course, I had to actually had to discover them during Holy Week, so, uh, so I didn't, I haven't gotten to go there very often. I see. Um, now about your affliction, is there a way for you to take painkillers, either prescription or holistic, like to say cherry juice or um, ginger that's supposed to be good to I, bring down inflammation? I have tried a lot of those things. I did use some cherry fruit extract because the the sheltered diet gave me gout, and and I would and I, and I was I was good I was using cherry fruit extract for that. Uh, my podiatrist put me on Lyrica, but. Even at the maximum dosage, it wasn't helping me in the slightest. And at the maximum dosage, it was making me so dizzy that I didn't want to keep trying it. Uh, that, yes, that's called a side effect. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, I mean, it was basically like I was walking around stoned, and my feet were hurting just as much as they ever were. And when I was on Vicodin for my back, my foot problem was still just as bad. So I, I don't know what will actually treat this issue. Mm -hmm. um, there's a place. There's a place in the Upper West Side. Um, uh, it's run by Gary Null, and they can try to cure you or help you, put you on a protocol on curing you holistically. Have you ever considered changing your diet that maybe that would help you? Oh, I never really thought about that because, I mean, especially because there, there's not a whole lot I can do to control my diet when I'm getting food from soup kitchens and shelters. Ah, oh, very true, very true. I see your point. Uh, I, I mean, I was nearly a vegetarian before I went, entered the shelter system, and now I still don't buy meat, but when it's put in front of me to eat, that's what I eat. So. Because it's a meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Hmm. Let's see. Is there anything you'd like to add to my... Uh, on what we've been discussing to like any appeal you want to say to my audience? Well basically one thing that you really have to know about the shelter system is how much they make. Uh, the shelter system was started under David Dinkins and its first uh, commissioner was Muzzy Rosenblatt. Uh, he convinced Dinkins that he could run this thing, the situation more effectively uh, if he were, if he, there were actually a Department of Homeless Services, and I've actually seen people on Twitter say, "Oh, isn't it great? New York City actually has a Department of Homeless Services." But I've learned through my work with Picture the Homeless that before HRA would really help you into into housing, and now because I'm general population, because they don't have anything in particular for people whose problems are, are strictly physical, uh, they basically said, "I'm on my own. I have to find a job." Uh, they, they sent me to their job developer as a guy named Rome Burkett, whose idea of job development for me was typing administrative assistant into Google, uh, printing off some job search forms and telling me to go apply to them myself so that he, I, he was just putting it, he was basically being an a incredibly useless middleman and he was calling me actually a few months ago and I said, well if you don't have anything more for me than just Googling stuff for me, uh, I don't even see any, if, how it's even a good use of my time to come see you uh, because basically I'm, I'm down on the computer all day looking for work anyway on, online because I mean that's how you get a desk job is you go online and so that's what I've been doing 
And so basically, each $3,500 a month is what the shelter is paid by the government. That's more than three times what my apartment in the Bronx costs. My apartment in the Bronx is like $34 a day. Um, they, they, at, I actually still owe two months on my apartment because I left before my lease was up and I'm un, actually under court order to pay that as soon as I can. They, can, they actually can't, they can take it as soon as my savings account goes over 1700 and I can't remember if it's 40 or $60, but it's something like that. Uh, so I'm safe from them taking that, but eventually I do have to pay them. It's, it's on my record for 20 years that I owe them that money. Mm. And so basically I had this really nice one bedroom apartment. The worst thing about it was that the oven didn't work and that there were mice. And, but it cost me like $34 a day. It cost $117 a day uh, for the government to keep me in the shelter where I'm in a cot in a, lo where I have a, cot in a locker and no privacy. Uh, and it, it's really just a complete waste of taxpayer dollars so people like Muzzy Rosenblatt can make a lot of money because the sh the sh there are 170 beds in this shelter so when they're fully stocked which is most of the time uh, they're getting about twenty thousand dollars and that's a, a bit of an overestimate but uh, there's also the the MICA credit is the me mentally ill chemical abusers. They get like $250 additional for the people who have any of those things. And the people who have those things are actually at an advantage to get into special housing. There, there's special housing for people with HIV, there's special housing for people who are mentally ill, and there's special housing for substance abusers. And one of the things a picture of the homeless we talk about is these people who are substance abusers, they really need to get cleaned up before they, before they get their own housing, but that's not how the system works. And so somebody like me, whose only challenge is physical, uh, basically has no resource at all you know, for, to help them. I mean, basically, as far as I'm concerned, aside from providing me with a place to sleep, uh, they have, nobody's lifted a finger to help me. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, in our last minute here, if you have a desk job or like to give Scott a grant, write to mannymanhattannews at gmail.com. And let's see if we can put this well-educated American to work. Uh, I want to thank you so much for viewing tonight. Scott, I want to tell you, you very takes a lot of nerve to say to uh, Manhattan your situation, and as hard as it is, and that you're living the way you're living mm -hmm. and if anyone out there can turn this guy's life around uh please manny manhattan news and, at gmail.com sir and and if you'd like to learn more details i've i've been keeping an extensive blog about my experiences in the shelter and it's at scottandrewhutchins.wordpress.com all right ladies and gentlemen thank you again this is why we occupy <laughs>